Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and it is autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. And so because it's autumn, I'm going to show you how to make fall photograms. So this afternoon, I was sitting out in my man cave shed. And when I was sitting in my man cave shed, I have a little shelf across the corner from where I'm sitting. And these little prints were sitting there and they've been there for a few years. I've made these a few years ago and the door to my shed was open and I was looking outside and all the leaves, the fallen leaves are on the ground because it's autumn now. And I got to thinking, you guys should see how to do this. You should consider doing this. So what are these? These are photograms. These are silver gelatin black and white prints, contact prints, if you will, or photograms of leaves. This is kind of an accidental thing that I discovered was I'm using fiber-based paper. And as you know, f perhaps when you dry fiber-based paper, unless you keep it flat against a piece of glass or something, it's going to want to curl when it dries. And uh, so when you make these contact prints of leaves, it's actually cool that they do curl because the curl of the paper kind of matches the, uh, the shape of the leaf in a sense. So I went outside today and I just happened to pick up a couple leaves here uh, from, from my tree. Uh, these are bigger size leaves, obviously, than what these little pieces of paper have on them. These leaves here on the prints were from my little hedge, a little hedge type plant, and they come up with small little, little leaves. Um, so what I'm using for the, these prints, the paper I'm using is actually Ilford multi-grade fiber-based paper. So this is a, a negative kind of photo paper. It's very similar. It's the same paper support as Harman direct positive paper, but it's a standard negative kind of emulsion. And it is for that reason that you get the black outline, the black background on the image, and you get the lighter colored uh, leaf in the middle where the actual leaf is. And so if you used Harman direct positive paper, you would have a light background and a darker leaf, but I kind of think the negative uh, image works better. It actually shows the leaf more as a, almost like a positive image of the leaf. You know, it makes the actual subject lighter than the background. So let's talk about how to do this. Um, I did these a few years ago in the convenience of my darkroom. And so I was able to contact print the leaves under a sheet of glass using the light of my enlarger. And I had the convenience of being able to cut the paper to size with my paper trimmer right in my darkroom. But as you might guess from my previous video, I'll, um, I'd like to f help you guys be able to do this kind of creative stuff without needing a dedicated darkroom space. And so what I've kind of done today is I try to figure out how you can do that without needing a darkroom. So in my previous video, the one about minimalist direct positive prints, I talked about the minimalist kind of darkroom capability or, or black and white silver gelatin print capability that you can, you can make for yourself is to have a changing bag uh, and a developing tank to develop 4x5 prints in. And you should refer to that video to see more information about what kind of tank to get, uh, what kind of changing bag or changing tent might work best for 4x5. But today, this video is really going to be about dedicated on these photograms of leaves. And so I'm assuming you've already got a changing bag set up. You can do these kinds of photograms uh, with simple minimalist developing. So what you're going to need besides the changing bag and the developing tank from the previous video is you're going to need one of these craft boxes. This is approximately 8 by 10. It's really about 7.5 by 11 maybe. These are the kinds of boxes you find in uh, craft stores in the United States uh, that are used to store photos and videos. And the kind of box that I happened to get was from, I believe it was Hobby Lobby store, but this one was covered in black felt. 
And so it made a, a natural light tight box. And you've probably seen me uh, show you this before. This was made into a pinhole camera uh, a few years ago and uh, it has a little shutter mechanism on the lid, but you don't need the pinhole. I'm just showing you the box. All you need is the, is the straight box and you have to be able to make it light tight, which means um, you, you preferably need a box that's black on the inside. If it's not black, spray paint it black or put some black flocking material, some adhesive craft felt on the inside of the box. And the main thing is you want to make sure that it's a nice tight seal between the lid and the side of the box so light doesn't get underneath it. So let's, so this box is going to fit inside your changing bag, okay? And what else do you need besides the box is you're going to need a black piece of stiff board of some kind. Now I happen to have some hobby plywood and I simply covered it in black craft paper because I didn't want to spray paint it. Uh, you could spray paint a piece of black wood or black board or something. You just need it stiff and you need it a little bit bigger than 4 by 5 You're going to need a, a thin sheet of glass. I used a picture frame glass. This was a small picture frame, real thin glass and uh, it fits nicely on the board. And your 4x5 um, piece of photo paper, your, your um, fiber-based print paper, is going to go on the board underneath the sheet of glass, and you're going to have a little bit of a border around the edge of the paper. So what you're going to do to do this, uh, and so you don't really know what the exposure time is going to be to get the right exposure, so you're going to have to experiment with this. But essentially, in your changing bag, you're going to have the, the big photo storage box. You're going to have your pack of Harman paper. And you're going to have your little board here and your piece of glass. And you need some large clips of some kind. I'm using these bulldog clips. And so in the changing bag, you're going to lay down your sheet of paper emulsion side up. And you can tell it's kind of slick feeling. And then you're going to put your leaf, right, on the paper. And you can feel by just touch how it's centered on the paper. And then you're going to take your piece of glass and set it down. And you can tell by, the, by touch how centered you are of the piece of glass on the board. And then you're going to take your clips and you're going to just put a couple of them on each of the long sides to keep the... Uh, leaf nicely sandwiched between the glass and the photo paper, okay? So like that, okay? Then you're going to want to open up the lid of your box. Again, it doesn't, it's not a pinhole camera, it's just a box. And you're going to set this assembly in the box facing up, facing toward the lid, and put the lid on, okay? Like that. And now you can bring it outside of your changing bag and you're going to want to take it outside and uh, I prefer to use shade, daylight shade, like the north side of a building or if you have a cloudy day. And you're going to want to take the box and point it up toward the sky and go 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, 4-1000, 5-1000, 6-1000, 7-1000, 8-1000, 9-1000, 10-1000, 11-1000, 12-1000, 13-1000, 14-1000, 15-1000, 16-1000, 17-1000
It depends on uh, how bright the light is. Pull the lid off, do your exposure, put it back, bring it back into your changing bag, take it out, put it in your developing tank, and then develop it. So you're going to have to do some experiments to see what kind of exposure is needed to get that leaf to show up good. Well, since you might not have the same kind of paper I do, and maybe you don't have the time or the money to be wasting paper on experiments on how much time it would take to do this, I took out, real briefly, some grade 2 resin-coated paper. So this is not fiber-based paper, this is grade 2 RC paper. And I normally rate the speed of this around ISO of 12. And also keep in mind this is grade 2 paper, which is a really low contrast paper. Um, as you can see, so this was actually this very leaf right here. Um, let's see how that works. Like that, right? And I ended up using the, the uh, photo storage box method of exposure with our glass plate and our little black board. And I ended up using an exposure of about 3 seconds on this in shaded afternoon light. And I had to process it real quickly and I pulled it out of the developer maybe only after 20 seconds because I didn't want the leaf to get too dark. But this just shows you an example that this is a light colored leaf, very yellowish, lightish. It's going to pass a lot of light. It's going to be a real quick exposure. On the other hand, if you had a green leaf, it's going to be a lot denser to the light that the paper is sensitive to, and you're going to have to use a longer exposure time. Um, I think if you compare this test image with the three here, obviously this is a lot lower contrast, a lot more faded. I would say that because these three pictures here used multi-grade paper, they're going to give you a much higher contrast in daylight. But I would advise you to use a multi-grade contrast for this to give you enough uh, uh, really good higher contrast in for your daylight light source. It'll give you better relief and better detail in the leaves there. But this is just a, a brief example of uh, using resin coated paper, just a quick couple minute rinse and uh, a quick squeegee and a blow dry just to show you uh, how easy this is to do. Once you've created your photograms of the leaves, you're going to have to decide how you'd like to display them. What I ended up doing is I had some spare uh, sheet aluminum, I think is what this was, and uh, it's thin enough that you can cut this on a guillotine style paper trimmer. Uh, and I used pop rivets. I actually pop riveted the corners in place. And I'm using really thin, stiff wire. I have a tiny hole pierced through the top of the print, and I make a little hook, and then I have a hole in the top piece of the frame, and I just make a little elbow angle there and the print sits there and kind of floats in the metal frame. What I like about this display method is you can put a couple little tiny brads in the wall and you can hang it up on your wall and then the color of your wall kind of becomes the matting around the picture. But you can also set these up on a table or a shelf or whatever and have them sit like this. The thing I really like about this is the frame is made of metal and it's silverish colored. The wire is, of course, made of metal, and the image itself is oxidized silver metal in the gelatin emulsion. So it is a metal image uh, suspended in a metal frame by a metal wire. And then the paper itself is made from plant material, which references the image of the object itself, which is plant material. So it's a combination of, uh, if you will, <laughs> mineral and vegetable. <laughs> Remember animal, mineral, or vegetable? Well, it's a combination of plant material and metals in this, this uh, little piece of art, if you will. So that is my idea for your fall photograms. Let's see if you guys can have fun with this, and if you get your little processing, daylight processing laboratory gear set up, you could do this pretty easily. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments below, and you guys have yourself a great day.